Few people have mentioned their Mini 3 RC freezing up and initiating a return to home. And in truth, I've experienced that too. So quick video today to go through why this might be happening and what you can do to avoid it. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones. And as many of you know, I have been playing with the Mini 3 now for a couple of months, uh, taking it around the country and even over to Malta as it's become my new go-to travel drone. Uh, on the whole, its performance has been absolutely astounding, for, especially for a model of this size. But one thing I've noticed occasionally is the app freezing and often a lost signal return to home being initiated. Now, a few people have mentioned this online. Uh, <laughs> What I haven't seen is uh, much advice on how to avoid it and fix it. So that's what I wanted to try and uh, talk about today. First off, let's make sure you're up to date. DJI released a major update in the last week or so. This update included a major amount of improvements to try and fix the freezing issues. Now you can check what firmware you're on, having the remote and the drone switched on and connected, going to the three dots top right, go across to about, then clicking the check for updates. Here you're gonna see both the aircraft firmware and also the remote controls firmware version under the RC firmware. Make sure both are up to date. Uh, they also released a new uh, RC update to try and help fix the maps and compass issues that some people were having. If it's all up to date, a little message at the bottom will tell you that you are up to date, but if not, Obviously with an internet connection, you're gonna download the update and then it will upload to the drone or the uh, remote control as required. But look, this latest update is only half the fix. And even on this latest version, you're still gonna encounter problems sometimes. So that is what I wanted to quickly cover today as well. A couple of weeks ago, I did a uh, video on how trees absolutely stop signal dead, even at short distances. Now in fairness, I have that same blind spot effect on my much larger Mavic 3 Pro, as well as the smaller Mini 3 Pro. But this is where the biggest problems come up. Take this flight around Silbury Hill down in Wiltshire a few days ago. And this Neolithic man-made hill is over 5,000 years old. It's the largest man-made hill in Europe. But take a look at the signal as I fly towards it and around it. As I get there, even at distance, the signal is rock solid. Even when I go over to 300, 400 meters away, signal hold firm and the picture is absolutely clear. No dramas whatsoever here, so all well and good. But now take a look at a similar flight I made just 10 minutes later from the bottom of the hill I'd been sitting on before. Crucially, with loads of trees and hedges in full leaf all around me. Now in this instance, I still had good line of sight of the drone as there were plenty of gaps in the trees. But this time, the screen starts freezing within a few hundred meters and it is not long before I lose connection altogether. Same place, same day, different location for takeoff and control, and we end up with a completely disastrous flight. Now, you may laugh, but I do actually have a degree in physics, although I didn't specialize in uh, radio signals. But it is clear to me that as proved in my signal test video a few weeks ago, flying near trees will utterly stuff your signal up and you will quickly lose connection uh, and you will find the app freezing. Doesn't seem to matter if you keep the drone in line of sight. You, if you've got trees around you, then you will suffer a much poorer signal and your screen will freeze when the video signal starts to drop out. And this is a key point I, want, I wanted to make. The, the screen or app freezing is usually the video feed that's failing, not the actual remote control signal that is controlling the drone. Very often flying up the drone up a little bit higher will bring the video signal back to you. But if not, after around five to 10 seconds, it's gonna offer you that return to home. Even if the main control signal drops out too, then the drone will automatically go into that fail safe return to home and it will return back to you. It's usually gonna reconnect within a few seconds. Um, and if it does and you're confident the drone is close enough for you not to lose signal again, you can cancel the auto return to home and you can retake control of the drone if you want. So this is where it's essential that you have the return to home altitude set correctly to make sure that it rises way up over any surrounding obstacles uh, or, or trees. I normally keep mine around 40 meters or around 130 feet unless I'm in a very hilly area. This normally takes it way up over any trees that are in the area. But look, the main point I wanted to make today was be careful about the point you actually take off from. The more open the space and the fewer the trees around you, the better the signal will be and you are far less likely to suffer any signal dropout. To be clear, 
it is the video signal dropout that is normally what's causing the app to freeze. So if you find that video picture starting to get a little bit choppy and starting to be a little bit uh, um, breaking up, try walking away from any trees that you might have nearby. Try taking the drone up a little bit higher. And of course, make sure you've got the remote facing where the drone is. The user manual does give an indication on the best position for the remote and it is this back edge that should be facing up to where the drone is flying. So look, that's it. Just wanted to make a quick video today as I've had a few people mentioning this and I had one or two actually getting in contact. They were a bit worried. Find a wide open space away from trees. You should have crystal clear signal for a good long distance. And if it does go a little bit A over T, then just relax, let the return to home do its thing and wait for it to regain connection. So on that, I will leave you with a few clips of Neolithic Wiltshire, absolutely amazing part of the country. Many of the highlights are actually best seen from the air. Sadly, the National Trust still have their stupid blanket prohibition of drones, even in these desolate places. Uh, it covers all of their land. But contrary to what they say on the website, they do not own the airspace above. So normally you're gonna be good to fly as long as you stay high over the sites if you take off from nearby land that is not owned by them. But if you do, maybe wait until closing time. You, you don't want loads of people walking around in your shot and equally you really don't want to be pissing off loads of people on the ground and giving them things to complain about. Stay high, stay away. I think it's just more polite and you'll end up with a better shot anyway. Remember, a lot of people on the ground, especially in Wiltshire, they're after a peaceful visit to something like Silvery Hill or over here, West Kennet Long Barrow, and uh, yeah, they don't want things buzzing around overhead. Anyway, look, as you can see, absolutely brilliant places to fly. And what I found really good is that a lot of these sites are very good for early morning or late evening flights when these shadows get longer and of course the colors are a lot better. So absolutely brilliant fun, great place to visit. As ever, give a little thumbs up if you like this video. Hit sub, ding dong, get notified when I put something out. Either way, until next time, whatever you're doing, have fun, happy flying.